Hi everyone, welcome back to Lingua Discovery. I'm Josh, and today we're uncovering the story behind accents. Why do they exist, and what do they reveal about us? From the twang of Southern American English to the clipped tones of British received pronunciation, accents are far more than just the way we speak. They are the voice of history, culture, and identity. By the end of this episode, you'll understand what accents are, how they develop, how they evolve, and why they matter. Let's jump in. Let's start with the basics. What is an accent? An accent is the unique way a group of people pronounces words, influenced by their linguistic environment, culture background, and even individual biology. Accents vary widely, even among speakers of the same language. For example, the English spoken in New York sounds vastly different from the English spoken in Texas, Australia, or India. But here's an interesting point. Accents aren't just about pronunciation. They also include rhythm, intonation, and even the way we stress syllables and words. For instance, in British English, the word advertisement is often pronounced with stress on the second syllable, advertisement. While in American English, the stress shifts to the first syllable, advertisement. Accents can even extend to vocabulary and commonly used phrases. If you've ever heard Australians call their afternoon tea break smoko, or Canadians say pop instead of soda, you're seeing how accents can touch upon unique vocabulary choices and languages beyond just sounds. These features, while subtle, reflect deep-rooted social, cultural, geographical, and historical ties. Now, a question we often get goes as follows. What's the difference between an accent and a dialect? While the terms are related, they're not interchangeable. An accent is primarily about pronunciation, how a word sounds when it's spoken. A dialect, on the other hand, goes further, encompassing more aspects of unique grammar, vocabulary, and even syntax, which refers to the set of rules, principles, and structures that govern the arrangement of words and phrases in a language to form meaningful sentences. The differences exist on a drastically wide spectrum. Take American English as an example. The New York accent includes distinctive sounds like the pronunciation of coffee as coffee, but this is still American English. Now, compare that to Scots, which is sometimes considered a dialect of English, but with its own grammar and vocabulary. In Scots, I don't know becomes Adinakin. See the difference? Accents develop through a fascinating mix of history, geography, and social interaction. Think about early human migration patterns. When groups of people have become geographically isolated, the languages evolve in different ways. Over time, even minor differences in pronunciation grew into distinct accents. Historical events play a key role too. The British colonization of North America, for example, brought a variety of English accents to the New World. As settlers spread out and adapted to their environments, new accents emerged, like the Southern drawl or the Bostonian Arliss speech. Accents also evolve as languages borrow words and structures from one another. In Singapore, for instance, the local English accent called Singlish reflects a mix of influences from Malay, Tamil, and various Chinese dialects. Its unique rhythm and intonation make it distinctively Singaporean. Here's another intriguing question. How do we acquire an accent in the first place? The process starts at birth. Babies are like linguistic sponges, taking in whatever sounds they hear around them. Their brains are wired to detect and differentiate between a vast array of phonetic sounds that exist in human languages, a phenomenon known as phonetic discrimination. However, as they grow, their exposure becomes increasingly limited to the sounds of their caregivers or communities' languages. By the time they start speaking, they've already begun to adopt the rhythm, intonation, and pronunciation patterns of that language forming the foundation of their accent. Interestingly, during this time, babies also begin to lose the ability to distinguish and produce sounds that are not present in their native language. 
This process typically occurs around the age of 6 to 12 months. For example, when a newborn might initially be able to hear the difference between the Japanese R and English R or L sounds or tonal distinctions in Mandarin, a baby raised in an English-speaking environment may eventually lose this sensitivity because those sounds aren't relevant in English. Similarly, as they start babbling and eventually speaking, their vocal apparatus fine-tunes itself to produce only the sounds that match their mother tongue, further solidifying their accent. But accents aren't set in stone. They can change or even disappear depending on your environment. If you've ever moved to a new region or country, you might have noticed your speech shifting to match the local accent. This happens because humans are naturally wired to adapt to the social norms of their surroundings, including the way people speak. Interestingly, some adults retain their original accent no matter how long they live in a new place. This is partly because the ability to learn new sounds diminishes with age. Children, on the other hand, are much more flexible which is why they often adopt the accent of their peers instead of their parents. This brings us to a fascinating phenomenon. Why can parents and children have completely different accents, even if they lived in the same place? The key lies in social exposure. While parents are more likely to retain the accents they grew up with, children are heavily influenced by their social environment. If a child's friends speak with a local accent, they'll naturally pick it up even if their parents speak differently at home. This is particularly common in immigrant families. Parents might retain their native accent when speaking English, while their children sound entirely local. It's a vivid example of how accents reflect not just where we come from, but also how we interact with the world. Now, let's explore some accents that stand out for their uniqueness. In the United States, the Boston accent is famous for dropping the R sound, turning car into ka. Contrast that with the Southern accent, known for its slow melodic draw, where I might becomes a might. Across the globe, Australian English offers its own flair. Australians are known for shortening words into catchy nicknames like Arvo for afternoon or Brecky for breakfast and their rising intonation often makes statements sound like questions. In French, Parisian accents are characterized by a nasal quality and a sing-song rhythm, while Quebecois French has older pronunciations and unique expressions that set it apart. For example, Quebecois speakers might say il fait froid to make it's cold, a phrase that doesn't exist in standard French. And let's not forget tonal languages like Chinese, where regional accents can alter not just pronunciation, but meaning. Take the Hunan accent as an example. In Mandarin, the word ma can have different meanings depending on the tone. However, in Hunanese Mandarin, tonal distinctions might sound slightly flattened or shifted, which can lead to subtle changes in how words are perceived. For instance, the rising tone might be pronounced less sharply, adding a unique flavor to the speaker's Mandarin and occasionally causing misunderstandings among listeners unfamiliar with the accent. Accents aren't just about how we speak, they're about who we are. They reflect our upbringing, our social networks, and even our aspirations. In some cases, they can be a source of pride, symbolizing regional identity. In others, this, they may lead to biases or stereotypes, reminding us of the importance of linguistic diversity and inclusivity. So, why do accents exist? They are a natural result of human diversity, shaped by history, culture, and geography. They connect us to our roots while allowing us to adapt to new environments. Whether you love your accent or find it frustrating, remember this. It's a part of your story, and every story is worth celebrating. Thanks for tuning in to this deep dive into accents. Share your accent stories in the comments. I'd love to hear about the curse of your local speech. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep exploring the wonders of language. See you next time at Lingua Discovery.